mind and all I know I could tell you now the details but it's better when it's shown this is where they laid me for a long while I lay dead it's a tomb just like my saviors and a stone that was just like his when Just that when he called my name, I walked straight out of that tomb. So if you want some freedom for your aching lifeless bones, you can take his brand new life and he will take your stone and send me If they're gone, it's not forever. We will see them all again. And together we will thank him for preparing us a home. And for all our tombs and stones and tears and for what he's done. Well, good morning. As you could tell, lots and lots and lots of activity happening um, out in the uh, lobby, and uh, uh, you you are in for a treat this service. So, oh, you guys, listen. I, I don't know what you're expecting in here today, but just shift on into it's much better than what you thought. Yes. You know, I I just would you fully. I don't know how to like. Mm, but would you fully just engage with your whole heart? 
your whole body, with your mouth, with everything. Just engage in, with these children that you're are coming be, out here you're today. You're going to be transformed. Your yeah, let, energy and effort to give yeah, here today. Yeah, give them all you got because they were going to give all that they have up here. And I just want them to be bl as blessed by us as we are by them. We you know? are. We be are a blessing um, to the kids today. We are glad you're here. We're going to introduce to you someone that I don't see yet. Uh, uh -oh. We lost our kids pastor. We have. Well, so, let's talk about them while they're not so here. So we'll talk about it. <laughs> so um, obviously it's been on Darlene uh, and my heart for quite a while uh, to begin to put our children um, to the front of the line when it came to ministry. We say our children. We mean your children. I mean your children. Which are church our children. children. <laughs> yeah. So um, w what we have done is uh, as a board, both the deacons, the elder board, and also the trustees have said, we want to go all in on ministry uh, to kids. And uh, so we're reframing that. So a lot of the generation posters uh, that you see hanging around have to do with that. So you know, I want to introduce to you our uh, brand new kids pastors that Michael have just moved here from Florida, Michael and Alyssa Lenahan. Would you welcome them to the stage? I thought you guys were gonna talk longer, so <laughs> we were out there. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Michael. This is my wife, Alyssa. We are the children's pastors here at Winston-Salem First. We are so excited to be here and be your children's pastors. So we have inter we're introducing this generation project, and, and very shortly you'll see on the screen. Um, so I'm out of breath. I had to run down. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a desire and a passion to reach the next generation, and God has given us a vision for this generation project, for the new children's facility over here in this building. Can everyone say amen? Amen. This building, not over there at the school, but in here bringing the kids under one roof that we're all worshiping in the same building. And so you'll see, um, this is kind of what we've created on the screen. Um, so we believe in engaging the kids in a visual, creative way because that's how kids engage today. They're visual. It, so if you have kids, you know they're probably online watching YouTube or other things. So we believe that we need to engage in, with them visually before somebody else does. And so that's what we're trying to create here is a space that's engaging, that as soon as they walk through the doors, they, their mouths drop and they're like, where are we? Is this church? And so we're trying to change the way people view children's ministry, and ch children's ministry at church. And we want kids, as soon as they come in, they're thinking about their five friends they want to invite to church. And so that's our passion and desire is to, is to connect with these kids in an, in an amazing way, in a visual way, and to just really just show them um, God's love and just amazing different ways they've never experienced before. Amen. You know, I think so many times, like, uh, children are kind of like the afterthought of a church. You know, like, okay, well, let's keep the kids busy. And uh, for Pastor Mike and Darla, that is not the case. Uh, instead, we believe that the God has sent us the people that he is depositing in uh, them that which will affect our kids in a way that they will come into their destiny, their identity, that will really set a passion in the children and cause them to rise up into who they are as men and women of God. We want the next generation to... Uh, their gifts and callings, to be using them early, to be functioning, to know what they are, to know that they are called. And uh, we believe that God has uh, brought uh, Michael and Alyssa here uh, for this reason. So we have a vision, but to be able to see that vision happen, we need your help. And so today, we're going to be outside in the foyer. Um, Watoto is on that side, which a lot of you guys are going to go over that way because they're amazing. But don't forget us in the middle because the vision is possible through you guys, obviously through Christ and God, but through you guys to help make it happen. So we're looking for volunteers to partner with us, to partner with the ministry, to help raise up this next generation. So we need volunteers. So if you love children, you're qualified. Now, we do have to do a background check and things like yes, that. That's yes. part of the process. Church pays for that, so you don't right. have to worry about anything financially. But if you love children, you're qualified, and we need your help to see this vision become a reality. So please come visit us outside today. Um, you'll see the Winston-Salem First Kids banner. We're standing there. we got some free candy. So there's opportunities to serve with Alyssa, uh, with the babies that are happening there, with the uh, older kids, and serve in all kinds of capacities. So yes. that's, they're not doing a fundraiser, so don't stay away from their booth. Uh, what they're saying is, look, would you serve a service or two services uh, for uh, um, one time a month? Or you can engage at whatever. Maybe you just say, oh, I want to I serve every 
uh, a 9 a.m. service. I'll serve all month yeah. long or whatever. Whatever God speaks to your heart to do. Yeah. So go by and see them at the booth. Yes. Would you give uh, a warm welcome and a thank you and a God bless you to our thank brand you. new kids pastors. Amen. Thank you guys. Amen. So we're in this series today. Uh, this isn't a one-off service for us. We've been planning on this service for a while. The, the series that we're in is called Visitations. And our own, our own family, we are, we are expecting uh, nothing would thrill my heart more than next Sunday to see uh, Whitney come through these side doors after having a visitation from the Lord. I just know that my, you know, uh, my heart is so expectant. I just know that it can happen at and any moment. I think about this. We are really just, I don't know how you get ready for something miraculous, but I feel like as a church, we're just not ready for what God is about to do through this body. I mean, I, I, if you could just, there, there is an expectation of the spirit that's in this house today, and I just want you to let it grab hold of your heart. Amen. Because God is about to do something, and we are not fully ready for it. In, We're not fully ready for it. In fact, stretch your hands here toward the stage. Lord, in Jesus' name, we just pray for our worship pastor yes. this morning, her and her husband. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would uh, do a miracle in Jesus' name. Yes, We're asking for a visitation from you, Lord, that you would uh, uh, rescue uh, Whitney. Yes. And uh, Lord, we will uh, give you the praise and the glory. We'll, we will uh, uh, not only go crazy as a church praising your name, but for decades and decades to come, this generation will know that the miraculous has not ceased in the Bible days, but is still active uh, among us. And so, Lord, we call upon you. We give you all the glory. You pick the day, God. That's up to you. You pick the time. You pick the how, God. We are just trusting you with all of our hearts. And we trust not only our daughter to you, but we trust all the children here in the city, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would just uh, bring about a renewal and a revival that every child that sits in these spaces that we're creating would have a visitation from you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Well, why don't you stand to your feet? You're in for a real treat today. Yeah. We're so excited. I just excited. want to encourage Go you. Go ahead, do one that. More. Fully engaged today. Can you tell we've been in prayer since about 3 this and we, morning? And we're we, pretty yes, fired up. We so. did get up about 3 this morning. But we've already been through one service, and I just feel so impassioned by the Spirit. Engage today with your whole heart with the Lord. Connect with God, connect with these children, and let them get energy from you, okay? They're gonna give all, they're, they're gonna give it all they got today. But I want you to give all you have in worship today, even with Anthony as we began. Let's, let's just really throw let, it down. Let me, let me say, let me say one more thing. Let me say one more thing, because uh, in, in prayer, often is how the Lord will, will share with me. The Lord wanted me to set the context for this morning we have the Watoto Kids Choir here. They're not, they're not, you are going to be entertained. Uh, you're going to cry, you're, but they're not, they're not here for that. We are getting to watch them because they all have had a visitation from yeah. God the Father. You will hear their story. Uh, Pastor Clint and Claire led a team, uh, and many of the team are here that went to Uganda. Uh, this is not the church or any ministry trying to uh, colonize or prostitute what God has done. But let me be clear about this. There, there is a God. Yes. His son's name was Jesus. He came and he died and Thank he you. did not die for nothing. He died because huma humanity has a great need for a mighty savior. We must be saved from our sins. So there needs to be someone sent to tell us and to show us, and our friends, Gary and Marilyn, uh, there in Uganda, 30 some years ago now, went and said, we have, uh, because of uh, Uganda was just uh, a, a war-torn country, war -torn, uh, country. I grew up seeing Uganda in the news. Uh, um, all, all of the, the uh, horrible things that had happened, and the children were forgotten in there, and they created an orphanage out of their church. They had a church and the church creates this orphanage and they begin ultimately rescuing babies that are left uh, in very yes. and many uh, many of those kids that are here so I don't want to but they found them in these desperate places thrown away but they were rescued and the Lord wanted me this morning to set the context because what what happened is God 
raised up somebody and a group of somebodies and a church that would rescue these babies that were gone and say, no, no, no. Even though you don't know who your father is, there's a father in heaven who knows your name and has sent us to rescue you and to raise you up. So when you see them singing and dancing today on the stage, you're not here to be entertained in that. You are watching a contemporary visible representation of the visitation of God upon a generation to rescue them from desperate places and desperate situations. Not because, and and by the way, they're not even American, Gary and Marilyn. I think they're Canadian actually. So what I want you to do is get out of your little jaded American Christianized version of, oh my God, what are we doing? Stop that. (laughs) In the name of Jesus, may the power of God touch a generation of kids that need to receive the love of the Father that had no other chance. Yes. There is nothing being prostituted up here today. We are giving glory to a God who saw children in the dumps and raised them up and gave them a future and an education and a hope because of people just like you. Because we believe there is still a miracle working God at work in our world. Can you say amen? Amen. Well, let's sing some joy to the world. Let's Let's sing along. Come on. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. See? 
Clap our hands this morning a little bit. Did you feel the mountain tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. We can see that God, you're moving. A mighty river through the nation And young and old return to Jesus yeah, yeah. Fling wide you heavenly gates Prepare the way of the risen Lord Open up the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness oh here we see it here we see that god you're moving a time of jubilee is coming yes it is when young and old will turn to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, fling wide you heavenly gates, prepare the way of the risen Lord, oh, is risen, open up the doors and let the music play. you're changing us into who we are called to be in this city and today is not just another day because we're together in celebration we're welcoming this this group from Watoto who's brought a deposit from their nation into ours to who we are to be even in our own city so we thank you Lord we thank you for this day this beautiful day that you've given us of joy of hope of peace and an expectation and we receive those things in our heart today 
Do what you want to do. Anybody say amen to that? Do what you want to do, right? Amen. Amen. Well, love on some people next to you and just say, you know, I just want God to do whatever he wants to Turn do. Turn and say hi to somebody. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk to your neighbor. Ushers, if you would go ahead and come on down. Get the ushers down here. It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. It'll I be like amazing. the energy in this room. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, you're not here by accident. If you're watching online, stay tuned. You are not watching uh, by accident. I know that today is a sovereign day. I felt it all the way through the message coming through. Unbelievable. Uh, both uh, Pastor Just... Edwin, who is here leading uh, the Watoto Choir yes. and, and his wife and the team. We it's did not amazing. give him this message. No, the no. message you were here today. Oh my the, gosh. The Lord sent him to speak it here, and it's just like, oh. Oh, incredible well, fire. And, you'll and, do, and, when he, yeah, just amen him the whole time. Just no. <laughs> now, this first offering is uh, ha, has nothing to do with Africa, okay? So if you're a guest and you're going to give, uh, you're going to have a second opportunity in a little bit to give to the ministry there in uh, Africa. But. Most of you were at home last Sunday. Where were you? Oh yeah, we were snowed we were in too. Home. With uh, 16 inches of snow. <laughs> we have we have now labeled that Snowmageddon Sunday. <sighs> that was serious, wasn't it? Woo. Yeah. We so, finally got melted down. <laughs> but here's the cool thing: you now have two opportunities to give today. So, you got, we need you to double up on your offering if you were a, a regular part. Uh, don't forget, let's let's try to make... Uh, don't lot. neglect your worship today, right? In your giving. Yeah, in your giving. I know it's the holiday and we're, you know, we give and we buy all these gifts and things like this. So, but... so the Bible says, the Bible says, you know, when you pay your tithes, it doesn't say only give when the church doors are open. That's true. That's right. That's true. So, and there's uh, online giving now and a textable giving, so it's really hard yes. to get out of... So we broadcasted last Sunday, if that still counts. So you had church in your house if you wanted it. Uh, in case you missed it. I don't know if it's still, is this still online, Anthony? Still online, you can see the Snowmageddon message uh, from last Sunday. Anyway, and we're the teasing, weird thing we're just is trying to we, call attention. We, we need you to give. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. The present Lord is really here when we, we came and recorded. It was, the, it was the, powerful. It was, it was, it was and you guys weren't here, but we felt, you know, I don't right. know, the Lord was here. It was yeah, really he was neat. the only one here. because yeah, it, uh, it was, it was, it's okay. Yes, it was great. <laughs> we recorded something on Saturday night as the storm was coming. Yeah. Well, anyway, ushers, go ahead. We are in the spirit. People have been worshiping and, and praising. We bless those gifts. Thank you. This is our regular Sunday morning tithes and offerings. So any commitments you have Amen. on that, you can put that in there. Amen. Uh, I, I want to make, we're just going to make one announcement that we're going to get off the stage and have the, the kids come out. But um, in 2006, when Darla and I became pastors here, uh, I attended uh, what our church uh, had been doing, what First Assembly at that time it was called. And now we've since put the, uh, the city in front of the denomination where Winston Salem. Salem first. But um, 2006, uh, I watched a Christmas production. We didn't do anything. Uh, it, it went. It was beautiful. It was amazing. The lights, the, the tree. Uh, there were people always singing all the way at the top of the tree. It was scary it and beautiful. It took almost year-long work to it get did. to that point. It did. To do and it cost, uh, just, the, just the price tag for that particular weekend was $30,000. And this not is, counting the time. This is a decade ago. The hours ago. that went into it. But then the time, if you had the employees and the time, we spent about $100,000 on that uh, weekend to get ready uh, for you counting drama and, and all the things. But that was just for Christmas. In two, that was 06. In 07, I, I let the same thing happen. I watched, and as I watched, I felt the Lord showing me that the redemptive potential of a 25-year Christmas program that this church had always done had now uh, been spent, and it was time for a change. So uh, right after that uh, event, in fact, one of our first meetings in January of, of 2008, uh, I got the team together and I said, okay, let's dream. What could we do? Uh, let's take $30,000. What could we do? And we dreamed up a Christmas party for the city that ended up being called Christmas for the City in 2008. It was a phenomenal success. And 
Darla and I were, uh, there, we had more than 10,000 people pass through on those four days, pass through uh, the Millennium Center. It was, it was unbelievable. Uh, Fox News, WXII, all the, all the camera crews were in our face that weekend. You could go back and probably find the footage. Uh, but the Holy Spirit, the very next day, checked me and said, it'll never be for the city if, if you put the church's name on it. And I, I knew that the Spirit had said, I don't want you in front of that anymore. So God, in His sovereignty, had already been speaking to Chuck and Sarah Spong, who, who moved to the city here from Chicago, that came down, and not only, not only took over Christmas for the city as a part of our team, they were executive pastors here and all that, but then Chuck just kept feeling a burden in Sarah too. So we've got to do something year long that ultimately turned into Love Out Loud that just a few years ago now stands on its own. So now more than 70 churches of our city own this event and get involved. So which I, wouldn't I'm, have happened which until we pulled our name off. That's of right. It, but it? I'm making this big commercial yeah. so that you don't miss Christmas for the city. Yes. We are not. We didn't involved. pull out of Christmas for the city. We just we just said, hey, this is not our deal. We're going to get it's in everybody's. behind and yeah. serve with all the other churches. Amen. So December the 20th, you need to invite unsafe friends. You need to take people. You need to go online to Love Out Loud, uh, Winston-Salem. And, um, and click on there, find out what they need. Convention Center downtown. Serve at the Benton yeah. Convention Center downtown. It's just one night only because of the big convention center. So you need to be a part of that. So big commercial to invite you to get engaged and be a part that let the ushers have finished now what they're going to do. Yes. What a treat we are in for today. Let my, I just implore you. You know what implore is? Like, implore. Ooh, implore you. Come on. That we would really engage. The same energy that these uh, kids are about to bring in their worship and praise, would you also match it? Ah, can you do that? Listen, I got senior citizens saying yes over here. Yes. Now listen. If that one lady's if, in her if, 80s. I've I'm talked I'm to her before. If for some reason you cannot engage in that way, I understand. But if, if you can, I promise you, you will, it will make you younger. You will lose years in here today. Your gray hair will turn back to its natural color if you will just so this, praise the Lord. this ministry that you're getting ready to watch was birthed out of a lot of pain, a lot yes. of suffering, and an investment by a couple, yes. uh, Gary and Marilyn, who gave their hearts to say, God, let's rescue and children. See a generation change. And now, okay. and now, you're in for a real treat. Would you welcome the Watoto Children's Come Choir? Come on. Woo! you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. You saw my bones being formed as I took shape in my mother's body. When I was put together there, you knew my name. All the days of my life were planned before I came to be. And when I woke up, you were there.
are precious to me. There are so many. If I could count them, there'd be more than all the grains of sand. I wake up and you are still with me. You are my father and I love you.
My name is Wycliffe. God has been so good to us, and we believe that he has been good to you too. I think we can all find something to be grateful for today. So if you don't mind, turn to your neighbor and tell them one thing that you're grateful for. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell them one thing that you're grateful for. Now, raise to your feet and join us as you worship Jesus. Yes! One more time, yeah. Right now, we would love to teach you a new song this morning. Are you ready to sing with us and dance with us? All right, come on. Everybody, put your hands together. Come on. Sing together. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. We lift it high. Say Everybody. 
Thank you. You may all have your seats. Hi, everyone. My name is Matilda. And this is what the Bible says. The Lord lifts the poor from the dead. He takes the helpless from the ashes and places them among the princes and royalty. This is exactly what God has done in our lives. I do not know who my parents are. I was told that I was abandoned on a street. A kind person took me to the local police station and later has brought to a toto. Today, I am 11 years old and I know that my identity is in Jesus. The past looks like we know that Jesus loves us. He has a plan for our lives and he will never leave us. Your story may be different, but Jesus is the same. He is faithful, loving, and kind, and he cares about you. He hears us when we call on him and meets us right where we are.
You know, we serve a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God who made a way in the midst of the sea, He is your God. <laughs> the same God who answered the prayer of Hannah while she was looking for a child, He is the same God you serve today. The same God who provided for the children of Israel, even in the desert where there was no food, and He provided food right there. He is your God. So we all have a reason to trust Him and surrender to Him and just give Him all the praise. Why don't you just take this time and just begin to exalt Him? You could raise your hands to Him and tell Him how wonderful and how beautiful He has been to you. Oh my God, thank you so much. You're so loving to me. You're so caring to me. Father, you have considered me. You have been faithful to me, oh God. I stand in the victory of your son, Jesus, because I know, Father, you have made me a son. You have made me a heir and a co-heir with Christ, oh Father. We are the royal priesthood because of the name of Jesus. We can stand and command the mountains to move. We can command diseases to move away from our midst in the name of Jesus. You could be seated here this morning and maybe you feel pain somewhere in your body. I just want to encourage you that God, the Father himself, gave Jesus a name that was above every name. That when you call the name of Jesus, every knee bows down and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. Why don't you just take this time and touch that part that is paining you? Maybe you're believing for the healing of a family member or someone in your family or a friend who is suffering from cancer, our God is still in the business of healing his children. Come on, just reach out to him right now with faith and expectation and tell him, Father, thank you. Jesus, we choose to trust you this morning. We know you are our Father. You have called us by your name, oh God. Father, where would we be without you, our Savior? The one who, who has transitioned our souls from the place of darkness and now you've brought us into your marvelous light. Father, we stand as royal priesthood today. So today we just want to speak in the name of Jesus and command any sickness that is in our body to get out. We rebuke any form of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that that woman who touched you even when she had that issue of blood, even today there's someone you're touching who has suffered with a disease in their body because your power is still here, oh God. So we choose to trust you. Even with those things that we have waited for a long time and maybe we have given up, your power today is coming through for us, oh God. You're working in us right now. We just raise our faith to you, God and say yes come and do it come and increase us come and open doors that have been closed in the name of jesus pour out your spirit and the rain of abundance in our midst this morning oh god we thank you jesus we thank you oh god let's sing it out together you have no limitation no power can stand against you you're the great I am come on sing it out your name is above all names your name's above all names no power can stand no power can stand against you you're the great I Yeah. 
seated here this morning and you do not have a personal relationship with this Jesus that we are singing about or maybe you've had him once but along the way so many things went wrong and you lost the track at this very moment right now we would like you to have that relationship restored back to you I believe it's not just about being a good person or having a lot of good deeds but it's first about having a personal relationship with Jesus the Bible says that he is the way the truth and the life no one can reach the father except through him and the father himself makes it clear that he loved us all so much that he gave us his very best Jesus that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life why don't we all just bow down right now and if you're seated in this room and you don't have Jesus right where you're seated would you stretch up that hand right now and receive him thank you so much for those hands just leave that hand up we would like to pray with you thank you thank you so much thank you we're gonna say a very short prayer together and uh, I want to encourage all the believers in the house to join us as we pray together with those who are saying this prayer for the first time say Jesus here I am Jesus I need you come into my heart and make me new today I receive your love comfort me heal me teach me your ways and give me the strength to believe from today I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior I belong to him and he belongs to me thank you Jesus for loving me for saving me for dying for me that today I would receive the victory I have in you come on someone let's celebrate together thank you so much if you've said that prayer I have good news for you you may not have known but that's the greatest miracle ever welcome to the family of God yes come on someone yes at the end of the service don't be in a rush to leave the church leadership is going to be here at the front and they would like to connect with you and help you on this journey that you have just begun it's so amazing thank you so much come on let's celebrate them one more time thank you yes yep. are you having a good time so far oh come on you can do better than that <laughs> yes and you think the team is doing a great job all right I'm going to ask the children to go and take a short break I promise they will be back they're gonna go and take a short break please clap for them as they go clap for them as they go thank you good morning everybody all right now listen where I come from when somebody says good morning or good afternoon or good night you have to respond now that I'm here I'm gonna do this one more time good morning everybody now that sounds more like home well my name is Edwin together with my beautiful wife Susan please give it up for my wife everybody yes we have the privilege of leading this choir and we are so excited about coming here this morning and sharing our stories and just spending some quality time in the presence of the Lord so thank you so much for coming out right now I want to tell you about Watoto I want to tell you our Watoto story is that okay with you okay we come from a beautiful country called Uganda and Uganda is found in East Africa it's also known as the Pearl of Africa I like to say you haven't been to Africa until you come to Uganda well that's just me we have the best bananas and pineapples in the whole world and if you don't believe me you Google that all right you invented the internet so use it go on Google that <laughs> we have the we have amazing weather it's always nice and warm in Uganda 
Contrary to what people say about Africa, Uganda is actually warm. Do you know how I know? I have been to a really hot place in the world, and that is Houston, Texas. <laughs> I was there one time in August, and I kept wondering, how do people even live here? And how do they have the audacity to say that Africa is hot? That place is, I was born and raised in Africa. I have never experienced such heat in my life. So from then on, I said, Uganda, Africa is warm. America is hot and cold. Sometimes it's confusing. Talk about last Sunday, you know what I'm talking about. Well, much as Africa has all these amazing things happening for us, there's a part of Africa that is not so pretty. Just like any other place in the world, you know, like New Jersey or... <laughs> oh, come on, that's funny. <laughs> There's a part of Africa that is not so pretty, like any other place in the world. But unfortunately for you, that's the part that you get to hear about the most through the media. And we want to tell you that Africa should not be portrayed like that because there's so much good and there's so much potential that's coming out of Africa. Yes. We come from a local church called Watoto. And at Watoto Church, we do two things. We celebrate Christ and we care for community. 30 years ago, yeah, that's amazing. 30 years ago, the greatest need in our country was with orphaned children due to war and disease. So as a church, we decided that, you know what, we are going to be a part of the solution to this problem. So we started to rescue children, and we started with only eight children at the time. As of today, we have rescued over 5,000 children. God is amazing. And so... We also started to rescue babies, babies left on the streets, babies left in places that I cannot share with you this morning. Today, unless somebody told you, you would not believe it, but 10 of the children that you just saw up here singing and dancing were rescued as babies. Wow, isn't that amazing? And the coolest part is they know that their identity is in Jesus Christ. But for us to have a bigger and greater impact in our community, God showed us another group of people that he wanted us to take care of and support. And these are the vulnerable women. We believe that when you support a woman like that, you also set her children up for a great future full of hope and possibilities like any other child in the world should have. So God has allowed us to come alongside and support over 4,000 women in Uganda. This is good stuff. And we call, we, we call this uh, our Watoto Neighborhood Program. What happens here is we find women that need help. Usually they are widows or they have been abandoned by their husbands and life is just tough. Some of them are HIV positive. All they are suffering from different things. And what we do, we don't want to give them a handout because we don't see any dignity in that. So what happens is we give them a hand up. Yes, amazing, right? So we will teach them how to read and write. We'll teach them how to start and maintain small businesses. We'll give them different skills so they can work and make money and look after their own children. Their children come to our schools so they too have amazing education that sets them up for a great future. And like I said, 4,000 women so far have benefited from this. These are not just numbers. Numbers are good for us to know how far we have gone vis-a-vis -vis the vision that we have. But I want you to, for, for a moment to think about this as individual lives, individual people whose stories have been changed forever. In fact, I'm going to invite my friend Elizabeth to come and share her story. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, and my mom is one of the 4,000 ladies that Watoto has supported. My, yeah. <laughs> my father and I we are very good friends, and I loved him very much. But when he fell sick, he went away. 
so my mother struggled to care for my twin brother and I. Through a total neighborhood, we were able to join one of the Watoto schools. During school time, we stay with one of the lovely moms in the village and have many new friends. At school, I am learning many new things, but my favorite is our cooking class because we learn how to cook and get to eat what we have cooked. During holidays, I spent time with my mom and I told her all the things we are learning. When I grow up, I want to be a head teacher so that I can give other children a chance to study. And that is just one of the many dreams that Elizabeth has and she has shared with me. Elizabeth and I have something in common and it's not the fabric, okay? If you didn't get that joke, it's still okay. <laughs> we still love you. Listen, 20 years ago, I was one of the first children that were total rescued. I know, every time I say it, that's what I get exactly. People go like, wow. And then they clap their hands after like five seconds. So I'm waiting for you to clap your hands, clap your way out of the shock, Okay. <laughs> Now, every choir gets a number. That's because every child travels only once. This is choir 96. That means we have had 95 different choirs since 1994. Going, yes, going from Uganda to the rest of the world. In fact, next month, January, there's going to be a big party back home, which we are going to miss so much. And we are going to be celebrating choir 100 celebrating 25 years of a total choir. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm telling you about all this is because I had the privilege of traveling on choir number three. Yes, choir number three. And this was so far the best choir ever because it had the cutest boy ever. <laughs> But before all those good things happened for me, getting on a plane and traveling to America for the first time and going to the UK and meeting all these lovely people telling me how, how cute I was and how all these good things happened. Before all that happened for me, both of my parents had passed away. And as a little boy, this was so hard for me, especially losing my mother. She was a single parent who always told me, son, you can become anything that you want in the world. And I believed my mother. My mother had nothing, literally nothing. But she had given me the best gift of all, and that's Jesus. She gave me Jesus, and he's always been more than enough for me. Now, for some reason, I love music. So I wanted to make music as a child. I wanted to make music. I wanted to sing and travel the world and see new places and new faces. Do you hear how that rhymes, faces, places? Yeah, yeah. Make me a beat. And <laughs> but when my mother died, she died with all of my dreams. And I would not dare dream again. Can you imagine an 11-year-old boy that cannot dream? Until one day, God came through for me. I came to a total and all of my dreams were handed back to me. I traveled on choir number three and I knew then that I would and I could become anything that I wanted to become in the world. God is so good. 20 years down the road, fast forward, I am living my dreams. I am married to the most gorgeous girl in the world. I have traveled the world. I have been so privileged to be a part of the team back home in Uganda that puts together all the music for a Toto. For me, that is a dream come true. And uh, I am so convinced that I have just scratched the surface of what God has in store for me. But you see, for me to stand here with such a strong and amazing testimony, for Elizabeth to stand here with her dreams today and all these little boys and girls with their dreams, for that to happen, 
It had to take the church to decide that we are going to do much more than coming to church on a Sunday morning and listening to great sermons and enjoying great worship, but we are going to go out and be the hands and the feet of Jesus. That we are going to go out and be the body of Christ because real church Real church does not happen in the buildings. Real church happens outside the buildings. Where the real needs of the people are. See, Jesus, Jesus did not call us out of the darkness into his marvelous light for us to just sit back and have a good old time. Do not get me wrong. His presence is so beautiful. The Bible says that one day in his presence is better than a thousand days elsewhere. But it comes with a responsibility. It comes with the responsibility as his children. If we love him that much, we are going to align our hearts to his heart so that the things that move Jesus' heart will move our hearts. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 23 that the church that you see is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. What that means is that the church has to be at the center of everything that's happening in the world. We need to take the center stage. We have to take our rightful place in the world. The Bible continues on to say that the church is Christ's body. Ooh, that gives me so much hope. That it is Christ's body where he acts, through which he brings healing, and through which he brings his very own presence to everything on the planet Earth. So I've been thinking to, to myself, so every time Jesus wants to feed somebody, who do you think is going to do it? The church. Every time Jesus wants to put somebody in a home who is homeless, an orphan, or a widow, who do you think is going to do it? Every time Jesus wants to see justice served in the world, who do you think is going to do it? The church, for one single reason, because he acts through the church. Can I be real? See, Jesus does not need you to do his work, but he's giving you an opportunity to be a part of what he's doing. Are you going to be obedient and say, yes, God, I will go? Or are you just going to be the, the kind who just comes to church, sit back and go back and tick off church? Tick. Done. That's not who we are called to be as the church. See, we live in a very dark world today. Everywhere you turn, you turn on the TV, on the news, there's always something wrong going on somewhere around the world. But I believe that Jesus also at the same time is activating his people, the church, you and I to extend his hand of love to the hurting world. And as the darkness sets upon the world at the same time, Jesus is also setting off these little lights. You, 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 everybody here to be the light in the world. On many occasions, Jesus has, re has referred to the church as the salt and the light of the world. That means relevance. It means relevance. And he's not looking for somebody with something going on that is special for him to use. So you don't have to be the richest person in the world to make a difference. You don't have to be the most eloquent person in the world to make a difference. Moses could not even make one statement. Look at what God did through Moses. You don't have to, to wait until you have a platform and a microphone in your hand to think, that you can make a difference because even a cup of water served with love can make a difference in someone's life. Here's another cool part. You don't have to come to Africa to make a difference. That would be cool though. So I'm just saying if God calls you to come to Africa, please come. Wherever God sends you to go, Africa, India, Asia, Haiti, Texas, Go, all right? <laughs> but do not wait until you have to feel the need to get on a plane and travel to some far, far away kingdom like Shrek and Donkey. If you missed that one, ask your kids. They'll tell you about it. The point is right here at home, in your community, at your place of work, at school, there's always opportunities for you to extend God's love to people. I would like to encourage the church 
This is to inspire you and to start up something in you. That get up. Get up. Let's stop being comfortable where we are. This is not who we're called to, 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 to be as, as the church. Going out to make a difference in people's lives is not what brings us closer to God. But it's because we love him so much. Because we know how much he has done for us. Because we know how much he means to us. So we know how much people mean to him. So we will reach out to the people. Does that make sense? So I believe that the church is the hope of the world because of one reason. Because Jesus is the hope of the world. And we represent Jesus on the planet earth. I believe that Jesus through the church can heal a person. Jesus through the church can heal a community. Jesus through the church, his church can heal our world. And that is the message this morning. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? Now, at Watoto, we are only able to do what we do because of the faithful partnerships of sponsors and friends from all over the world, including yourselves here this afternoon. So thank you for having us and thank you for coming out. I want to celebrate a special group of people. If you are here and you sponsor a child, maybe through Watoto or Compassion International or any other organization, I know you are there. Please put your hand up. Come on. Yes, let's clap for these people. Come on, everybody. Yes. Wow. Hey, listen. On behalf of the people that you support, that you may never even get to meet, I want to say thank you so much for what you're doing. May God richly bless you. Now, uh, I want to share with you a couple of ways that you can partner with Watoto. Number one, we need you to pray. Pray for Watoto. There's so much work to be done, and we need God. So every time you think about Watoto as a church, as a family, as an individual, say a prayer for us. Number two, we need sponsors. We need people to sign up to sponsor children. For $38 per month, you can make a difference in someone's life. My life was changed because of people around the world who supported me every month, $38. And today, I am also making a difference in so many people's lives. And one of those is a little girl that my wife and I support through Watoto. And we cannot wait to see what happens with that girl 20 years down the road. I want to invite you to something amazing, to invest in a life. I don't think there's any better investment than that. Invest in a life, $38 per month. And you get to get a profile of a child. It's a picture back there. And you take this picture with you and you can pray with this, for this child. They write to you, you write back, and you can tell them all about the snow and everything else. They become literally a part of your family. You get to see them grow up and become amazing people. But also you can say, you know what? I want to sponsor a mother. I didn't talk about the moms that look after these kids in the Watoto homes, in the villages. Every house has eight children and a house mother. These are not a part of the 4,000 ladies that I spoke about. This is a different group of people. These are heroes, or I would say sheroes, because one of those ladies raised me up. Today you're enjoying this young man because of the hard work of that woman. And so I want to invite you to, you might say, you know what? I want to sponsor a, 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 a mother at Watoto. Same thing, $38 per month. You, want, you, you might want to say, I want to pay up for six months all up or a whole year. You know, every year I'll pay once a year or six months. We can do that. And guess what? We take plastic. <laughs> no, seriously though, come and invest in a life today. We also need partners. Maybe you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a nurse. Maybe you have just retired and you're like, what do I do now? What do I do? You could come and volunteer at, at Watoto. If you're interested, we have an office here in the US of A. It's in Florida, warm Florida, thank God. <laughs> We have an office there. Come and speak to one of us after the service and we will hook you up. In fact, I'm giving all of you an open invitation to Uganda. All right? right now, I'm acting as the ambassador of Uganda. I'm inviting you to Uganda. All right? After here, call your travel agents. Tell them next stop, Uganda. Please make sure you say Uganda, not Wakanda. 
Because right now, they don't even have a king, so if you didn't get that one, ask your young people, they'll tell you. <laughs> so please make sure it's Uganda, right? Come over and, and see, see for yourself, first of all, what we are doing at Watoto. Maybe you just want to come and cuddle with the babies. Please come. Uh, also, we have merchandise, some of which we brought all the way from Uganda, like bags and jewelry. Um, some of which actually is made by some of the 4,000 ladies that I spoke about at the beginning. They make this stuff and it's amazingly good. So come and buy something for yourself or for somebody this Christmas. We have the music you heard and much more on CD. Now, this service has more young people. I'm seeing people going like, what? CD? What are you talking about? Like, what? That's my impression of young people in America anyway. Listen, we have download cards, okay? You buy the card and there is a code and you download the music straight to your phone or to your tablet. Is that all right? Yeah, he's like, yeah, man. I can dig that, yeah. <laughs> That's my other impression of young people in America. <laughs> we also have a book there written by our co-founder, Marilyn Skinner, still about the 4,000 ladies that we are, we are, we are su supporting through Watoto Neighborhood. Come and buy a book and be inspired. On behalf of our pastors, Ma uh, Marilyn and Gary Skinner, we want to say thank you so much for having us here. Thank you for opening up your doors. Thank you, everybody, for coming. May God richly bless you. Pastor. All right, ushers, go ahead and come. We're gonna take, we're gonna take the offering. So the ushers are coming. You don't need to hear anything else from me. We want you. This is my associate pastor, Evan. We welcome Evan here to the front. This is one of yours. This is one of ours. This actually is a miracle from heaven, right here. He's standing right here. Ushers are coming. We're just gonna, just gonna pray over the offering. Then Evan and I are gonna dance. It's gonna be awesome not. I love this ministry. Uh, Clint and Claire recently led a team there. We know about all the, everything you're hearing is 1 million percent true. So if you're a guest here in this service, here's our 100 percent guarantee. Anything you give in this offering, if you're giving by text, text the word Africa. Everything you give, nothing is taken off the top. We don't take anything. 100 percent guarantee that um, everything you give, uh, $50,000 will allow us to um, buy or, or uh, build a home there and uh, get, it, uh, get it ready to, to uh, take in another mother and eight more children. So if God's put a big amount on you, 10000 5000 8000 if there's some amount rattling around in your heart, it's the Holy Spirit. And I want to just call that forward so that you'll Put that in, you can put it on your credit card or on, uh, however you give. You can give and every penny of that will go uh, to Watoto. So uh, Lord, thank you for this moment. We give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. The next song we're going to sing is called Peiluo. It's a phrase in one of our local languages and it means do not fear. It's an encouragement to you that whatever God has placed on your heart, do not fear. He will be with you every step of the way.
branches to follow And go where you lead As long as you're with me I will not fear I trust in your promise Every step of the way Thank you so much for coming and just choose to enjoy with all of us. We have had fun with each one of you. Children, have you? Yes. Oh, yes. As said earlier by Edwin, indeed, Jesus is calling each one of us to be his hands and his feet, to shine his love right where we are. So as Watoto family, we would love to encourage you as an individual, as a family, as a community, as a church, to actually respond and say, yes, we will go. Can we do that, church family? Yes. All right, everybody say, we will, we will go. We will go. We will go. The last song says, we will go.
we have these bikes we call border borders and we made a dance out of them. We would love to teach you that dance. Are you ready to learn it? So come on everyone, rise to your feet as we try the border dance. Here we go. Everybody like this, come on. Border, border, kick and kick, that's right. Appreciate the children one more time. Good job. And let's give a big shout of praise to Jesus. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. May God richly, richly bless you. had a great time today. Um, I've, I've, yes, I believe that you had, and the children are just wonderful. As you uh, leave today, once you know there's some things going on in the Silter folder for you, the kids will be out there. Also, if you're interested in signing up, even working with our children's program, which we highly encourage, we believe it is the future, and what God is doing in these children's lives matter. They are going to make history, aren't they? You can feel it. So praise God. Amen. You guys go on. Have a wonderful day today. If you need prayer, there will be people around the front to minister here. So if you need to come this way, you can come this way. Otherwise, we bless you. Have a wonderful week.